What's going on, Graveyard Shift family? It's your fearless shift leader, Dalen Spratt, clocked in for another amazing shift. And as you can see, your boy is in sunny, sunny Savannah, Georgia. But y'all, we're somewhere nice. It's not saying Savannah's not, but we are here at the Colonial Cemetery. The Colonial Cemetery. Look, doesn't this just feel so inviting? This is one of Savannah's most notorious resting communities. It says this cemetery, the second in Colonial Savannah, was the burying ground for the city from about 1750 until it was closed against burials in 1853. So they stopped putting people in here in 1853. This resting community is from the 1700s. The 1700s, y'all. Look at this. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of the stones in this resting community. Look how beautiful Savannah is. You have the trolleys, the weeping willows. This is really like a park. Okay, this is a below the ground vault. You know, we're used to seeing vaults above the ground, something like that. This, this is the family vault. Daniel Cusell, Thomas Purse, Daniel Gusel, Stephen Albion. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of people under there. Wow. It's probably about 15, 20 people under there. this one look at this look at this wow does it even have a name or a headstone oh okay here we go John Robert died on the 12th of October 1807 at the age of 59 years, 10 months, and 25 days. And Catherine Trutland, his wife, on the 16th of December, 1836. Oh, wow. She was 80 years, 6 months, and 12 days. Wow. Wow. Savannah's definitely a, a older, older town, y'all. Look at this. Underneath the weeping willow tree. Patrick Stanton, who departed this life July 16th, 1820. He was in his 30s. Wow. Wow. I brought you all to this resting community for a reason. For a reason, for sure. I want to tell y'all a story. But before I tell the story, I kind of want y'all to get a vibe of this resting community. You kind of just see what it feels like. See how old it is. So this is Reverend Jean Baptiste, a refugee from the revolution in France. Formerly Cure of Morley Le Roy and the first Catholic priest in Savannah. He died in 1794. <clears throat> this man passed away and was buried here in 1794. We haven't bumped into anyone buried that early in Atlanta yet, yet. Here, keep looking. One thing about Savannah, their resting communities are beautiful and they're treated like parks they're treated like parks and all of the graves of people that have stories attached to them 
uh, they have monuments and placards that kind of tell a brief, you know, history of them and their accomplishments or their contributions. So I think that that's really cool. It's really almost treated like a, a living museum. So, let me tell you a little bit about why I brought you here today. Now, we all know what beef is, right? Now, I know our audience can be a little bit more seasoned than most. So, for, for those that are a little bit more seasoned or you live out the country, a beef is an issue that you have with somebody, a problem that you have with somebody, your your worst enemy, your your uh, 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 your arch nemesis. Y'all got beef, but see, people think beef is new. Beef been around since Cain and Abel, y'all, since the beginning of time, and it did not stop here in Savannah, Georgia. Let me tell you about this crazy story. So. There is a city in Atlanta, outside of Atlanta, called Gwinnett, right? I've always heard about Gwinnett, Gwinnett County, Gwinnett, Gwinnett, Gwinnett. But I never really knew who Gwinnett was <laughs> until I got to Savannah, Georgia. You see, the area of Gwinnett is named after a guy named Button Gwinnett. Follow along with me now button like a button on your shirt you see button was from england and button got named after his grandma grandma button nana button <laughs> so they named the young man button Gwinnett, right now living life buttons living in england he ends up getting married but as he's married he ends up meeting some sailors that did like some type of trades and sales with america from england they're telling him all about the revolution that's going on in America. Button becomes obsessed with it. So much so that him and his wife move from England to South Carolina. <laughs> South Kaki <-lacky. laughs> Button decides to become a merchant, right? Button decides to become a merchant in South Carolina. That didn't work out for Button. So he was like, you know what? M merchant merchandising ain't really my bag maybe i should become a farmer so boom button decides to be a farmer out the blue button ain't never planted a damn sunflower seed <laughs> but he for some reason felt like he was going to be a farmer in sunny south kakalaki and as you know you probably can figure out what happened failed miserably miserably so Button decides to move to Georgia. Him and his family move to Georgia. And, and you know, Button starts working his way up that political ladder. People start fooling with Button. With with uh with Button. You know, everybody knows old Button. Y'all, do y'all know that this man worked his way up to like acting governor? This man even signed the Declaration of Independence. This man signed the Declaration of Independence. If you look at it, there is a man named Button Gwinnett that snuck his signature. He didn't sneak on there, but he done snuck his way on there <laughs> from England <laughs> to over here <laughs> to sign our Declaration of Independence, y'all. And what's crazy about it is they say that his signature, his autograph, is one of the most priciest autographs on the market. I'm talking about above LeBron James, above Michael Jordan. Even above your fearless shift leader, guys. Wild, right? So, Button doesn't sign the Declaration of Independence. Then he becomes, like I said, acting governor. So while Button was an acting governor, he was hell bent on sending Georgia to war. Like he was determined, determined to go to war. But see, the problem was, you see, Georgia had a general. A guy by the name of Lachlan McIntosh. There's only two names you got to remember. Button Gwinnett and Lachlan McIntosh. Y'all, 
McIntosh was the general. He had a whole different strategy. He wasn't trying to take his people to war. But you see, Button was hell bent on taking over Florida. He was trying to take over and seize Florida from the British. So Button takes Georgia into a war with Florida, right? Who can guess what happened? <laughs> oh, Button didn't fare too well and they lost that battle. Now, now it's time to get back to Georgia and they gotta talk to the Georgia Assembly to figure out what the hell happened and why y'all boys out here fighting with Florida and losing. Y'all, do you know <laughs> that during this general assembly, Button got up there in front of all of those people and looked them dead in their face and said, look, crazy, right? It wasn't even me. It was your boy, General McIntosh. Old Mac attack over there, man. I told him, I said, hey, Mac, 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 baby, we ain't got to fight Florida. <laughs> we ain't got to fight Florida. <laughs> but McIntosh wanted to take his ass on the Florida and fight for our rights. And the assembly was like, oh, my gosh, McIntosh. Is, it, is this true? Is this something that you did? Y'all, do you know that this man, General McIntosh, I, I got to pull it. I want to tell you exactly what my man said. He stood up in front of the General Assembly, looked Button Gwinnett in his face and said, my man, you are a scoundrel and a lying rascal. A scoundrel and a lying rascal. Y'all don't think y'all heard me. Do you know what that is equivalent today? To, to, he might as well said your mama ugly and got knocked knees. Your daddy got one chin hair and the back of his, back of his neck look like a pack of hot dogs. <laughs> your granny pigeon toed and got a mullet. That's about what he might as well have said. Y'all, he pissed button off so bad because he was embarrassed that this man actually stood up and went against the acting governor. Y'all, do you know that Button was so much in his feelings that he challenged General McIntosh to a duel? I don't think y'all heard me. Button Gwinnett in the middle of a meeting with the Georgian Assembly, challenged this man to a duel just because he didn't like being called a lying scoundrel. I might have threw that in there. <laughs> or a dirty dog rascal. <laughs> a dirty SOB. He didn't like none of that. Y'all, but look, General, General McIntosh, he wasn't scared. He ain't scared of nobody. He was like, man, look, bro, we can go handle this right now. Y'all, do y'all know these two brothers walked out of the assembly, walked outside, and proceeded to set up for a duel? Y'all, they stood 12 feet apart from each other. They announced the start of the duel. Both guys pulled out their weapons. Both guys fired shots at one another. Both men were struck by each other's bullets. Here's the wild part. General McIntosh survived. But old Button Gwinnett, he died three days later. So all that yapping and lying and talking he was doing, challenging people to a duel, got his ass handed to him, y'all. But what's crazier is that General McIntosh lived, you know, 30, 40, 50 years after that. He, he lived his life. <laughs> but what's wild is that both of those men are literally buried in this cemetery, probably only a couple hundred feet away from each other. <laughs> so I thought it would be interesting to not start up no drama, not to revisit no past stories, you know, beefs, not to cook no old beef. 
But I got some questions. I got some questions. Because I would be thoroughly upset to find out that the person that took my life is buried right across the street <laughs> from my resting area. Wow, right? Wow, right? Let me show it to you. Look, this ought to show you how serious Savannah, Georgia was about their dual game. They have a whole section in this wrestling community for the dualist grave. This marker here, it says this epitaph to James Wilde on the nearby tomb is a melancholy reminder of the days of dueling and particularly of a tragic affair of honor fought January 16th, 1815. So look, it says, Lieutenant Wilde was shot through the heart in a fourth exchange of fire by Captain Roswell P. Johnson and who is referred to in the epitaph in bitterness as a man who a short time before would have been friendless but for him. That's crazy. That's crazy. They wrote on this man's uh, grave right here, on his headstone. His brother wrote him a poem. It's kind of faded right now. But in sense, it says, one of the most famous lines from it says, my life is like the summer rose that opens to the morning sky, but ere the shades of evening close is scattered on the ground to die. What is ERE? Is that er? Is that er? Or is that ERE? Is it ear? ERE? Er? Or ERE? <laughs> yeah, Y'all know I just be playing with y'all. But yeah, y'all, that's crazy, right? That they literally have. A whole section dedicated to the dueling to those who have dueled in Savannah, Georgia. I ain't gonna lie to you. If I lived back then, your boy probably would have gotten to a couple of duels. <laughs> I, your boy might have been three and zero for duels back in the day. I feel it. I feel. I feel my duel record was three and zero. Because I am not to be played with, fellas. I am not to be played with. Y'all, what do y'all think? What do y'all feel about dueling as a, as a cultural thing back in the day? Who would have been down to duel? Have you ever been... Let me ask you this in the comment section. Have you ever been so adamant about something? A conversation, an argument, the way you felt towards somebody that you would have... You would have dueled them. <laughs> I'm talking about 12 steps, turn around and letting one off. <laughs> Y'all, that's crazy to think that that was like damn near legal back in the day. That is wild. I'm so glad they changed things. So this is Button Gwinnett. A.K.A. My man that kind of who wrote a check his butt couldn't cash. But I must say, Button, man, hey, man, you live life, bro. You came from England, man. You tried a couple things. You ended up acting governor, bro. You, 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 you sent your people to war. You signed the Declaration of Independence. Man, you did your thing, man. You just, you just, you just, you let your ego get the best of you. This memorial to Button Gwinnett, Georgia signer of the Declaration of Independence, president of Georgia, whose remains buried in this cemetery are believed to lie entombed here under, was erected by the Savannah Chatham County Historic Site and Monument Commission. Good old button. Y'all, there's a lot of people standing around, but I'm still gonna try to do a session. So we're gonna see, let's get to it. Y'all, I don't know how much time we have to shoot this because there's literally people all around. This is a park. Like, people are here, and they want to see Button. They want to see old Big Body Button. <laughs> uh, there's people coming. There's people coming. There's people coming. Um. Yeah, oh well. <laughs> oh well, welcome to the shift. Welcome to the shifting zone. 
Budden, Mr. Budden. Mr. Gwinnett, Mr. Budden Gwinnett. My name is Dalen Spratt. And uh, yeah, man, what I do is I come to wrestling communities like this and I try to speak to those who may not have been spoken to in a long time. There's people literally right in front of me, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all, we back. <laughs> we back. <laughs> Some people came over here talking to me. <laughs> so I had to explain what I was doing, but we're back. All right, so Budden, Mr. Budden, Mr. Budden Gwinnett. I actually live outside of Gwinnett <laughs> in Atlanta. So it is an honor to be sitting here with you. But I do have a lot of questions that I would like to ask you. Again, my name is Dalen. I come in love, peace and respect. Mr. Gwinnett, are you here? Is Mr. Gwinnett here? There he is. All right, look, look, Mr. Bud, man, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I'm gonna get straight to the point. I've been reading about your story. I'm, he said, sum it up. <laughs> well, look, man, I want to talk about the duel. I would like to know what it was like to make that type of mortal decision. So, from my understanding, so Mr. Button, man, listen, from my understanding, you and Mr. McIntosh got into it. My man called you some feisty words. Is that part of the story true? Do you remember what he called you? Yes. What did he call you? So are you mad that he said that in front of everyone? Do you feel disrespected? Okay, so you felt disrespected, so you called him out to a duel. Yeah. You said, yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Now, let me ask you this. In your heart of hearts, <laughs> did you just think that you were just a better shot than him? Like, what was your mindset going into this duel? I <laughs> Did the thought of you losing cross your mind any? We asked for it. So are you just okay with whatever the results were going to be? Um, 
So, what was going through your mind right before you pulled the trigger? Must you? Did you feel like you made a mistake at any point? No, ever. So what do you feel like was the mistake that you made? Did you mess up by agreeing to do the duel? Or did you mess up because you didn't get the perfect shot off? Well, he could not. Mr. Button, Mr. Button Gwinnett, look, man. I joke about the situation of just moving off of emotions because essentially you moved off of emotions, man, which is me. All you have, they say a man only has is his word and like, you know, his reputation. So like, I understand you feeling like you had to stand on that. And I respect the fact that you stand, you stood on it all the way to the end. Yeah, you might've lost, but respectfully, you took it all the way to the end. I kind of look at it like back in the 70s, you know, when people in the movies used to get in the car and the guys used to race, play chicken on the on, off the side of the mountain. And the guy ends up like staying in the car and going off the side of the mountain. Yeah, he did. But he proved a point. <laughs> Mr. Button, you definitely proved your point, man. I just want to know, do you regret taking it that far? Because after it's said and done, man, you were here, and that man continued to live 30, 40 more years. Was your ego hurt worse in the afterlife because you lost? Okay, so let me ask you this. I don't know if I told y'all. The man that killed Mr. Button is actually, I think I might have told y'all. He's literally right over there, right? So, Mr. Button, how do you feel being buried, you know, a few hundred feet away from the man that took your life? Or is it at the point of it being a duel, it's a manly fight, so you just took the win with the loss. So, Mr. Gwinnett, how do you feel about the life you live? You feel sad? Why do you feel so sad? And you know the 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 bad part about it is that after he was killed, the British that he was trying to fight in Florida ended up seizing his property in Georgia, and his wife and daughter didn't even live to like to make it to see the end of the war. 
So like everybody in the Gwinnett family was about it there, man. Do you feel like things would have been different if you would have stayed around, Button? Were you happy to be reunited with your family? You know what's crazy? It makes me think about my friend James, who uh, I told y'all the story of how he wanted this woman so bad that when he finally got her, he lost his life essentially, potentially, behind her. It's like the thing that he wanted the most cost him his life. So fast forward to Budden here. He wanted to move from England to America because he was so like just interested in the, like the revolution and what was going on. Worked his way all the way up. Like wanted to be a part of that system. The system that essentially killed him. I don't know. Button, how do you feel about that? Do you wish you did everything differently? Uh, oh, that's your legacy, right? Are you happy with your legacy? Simpler. Family. All those but no Do you wish you had stayed in England and just lived a much simpler life? Good. Okay. Well, Mr. Candy Buddy Gwinnett, I appreciate your time, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to say? <laughs> Thank you. So, and then as it is, before I go over there, do you have anything that you would want to say to Mr. McIntosh? Okay. All right, man. Thank you. Y'all, I ain't trying to be messy, but I just want to know what old. Mr. McIntosh has to say about the incident. Let's head on there and talk to him. All right, family. So we talked to Mr. Bud and Gwinnett. Now it's time for us to talk to the winner. General Lachlan McIntosh. 1727 to 1806. In memory of Major General Lachlan McIntosh. Lachlan McIntosh, Georgia's ranking continental officer in the American Revolution, was the son of John McIntosh, who settled with a group of Highlanders on the Altamaha in 1736. A firm supporter of American rights, McIntosh was commissioned colonel of the 1st Continental Regiment raised in Georgia. A feud with Button Gwinnett, signer of the Declaration of Independence, resulted in a duel fought near Savannah. That's on my man's epitaph. <laughs> he let y'all know he ain't playing. Did, uh, I don't think Mr. Button had the duel on his, mentioning on his grave. But the winner show did. <laughs> That's messed up. That's messed up, y'all. 
let's do a spirit box session here. I just want to see what General McIntosh's vibe is. And does it differ from that of, you know, acting Governor Button Gwinnett? That's crazy. All right, let me set up. All right, family, we are sitting here at the final resting space of General Lachlan McIntosh. Now, you've heard the story. We visited the person that he dueled with. Now we're here with the person who won. It seemed like in the, in, in the, in the sense of the story that Mr. McIntosh kept getting the short end of the stick like he was like it was almost like he was being bullied you know what i mean into into defending himself he didn't want to go to war they get to the general assembly uh button gwinnett lies on him he defends himself by calling button the name a uh, a liar and a scoundrel and a rascal and a dirty damn dog he didn't say all that but then Button wanted to take it to, to, to murder. Like they skipped fisticuffs. <laughs> like they skipped a couple rounds before they got to firearms. But he was like, okay. And he did what he He even got shot in the midst of. Could you imagine somebody making you do something against your will, lying on you, saying it was your idea, then arguing you down, challenging you to kill you, and then shoot you? <laughs> You're like, damn, it's a bad Tuesday wild so general mcintosh my name is dalen i come in love peace and respect what i do is i come to rest in communities like this and i speak to those who may not have been spoken to in a very very long time mr mcintosh we've heard your story we've heard your story and we would love to just get your opinion on what happened Again, my name is Dalen. I come in love, peace, and respect. There's people in front of me on the street watching me, y'all. <laughs> That's okay. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to me? No way. Said no way. Is General McIntosh here? Get it? General McIntyre. I've heard a lot of stories about you. The story that I would love to speak to you about is the duel that you had with Mr. Budden Gwinnett. I know you remember it, but do you mind if I ask you a few questions about it? Uh, you said he shot you? <laughs> that man did shoot you. But you felt like you had to defend yourself? So let me start from the beginning. I just have a few questions and I'm going to get out of here. Said, ask me. Okay. General McIntosh, how did you feel about Mr. Gwinnett when you, when you first met him? At what point did y'all start bumping <laughs> heads? <laughs> okay, so when it was time for y'all to go to war, were you totally against the idea? I'm going to war. So we I know. 
on one of the... He just kept throwing? So when Georgia lost, do you feel like Budden tried to put all the blame on you? That must have frustrated you, huh? So they said during the General Assembly, you literally just called him a liar in front of everybody. That's where it all started. <laughs> But clearly you felt that way, right? Why do you think Button was lying to everybody? That he was useless? Wow. So let me ask you this, when you called him out his name and called him a liar, did you think he was going to take it to dueling? Did it surprise you that he wanted to do it with you? Were you nervous at all? Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. So he's asking for it. Did you think that there was a chance that you could have lost? So what do you contribute to you winning? Do you feel like it was just by fluke, by chance that you won? Because you got shot too. Do you feel bad about the way things played out with Button? Did that duel hunt you afterwards? Did you always think about it? Said it felt good. Did you not like Button that much that you wanted him out of here? Have y'all bumped into each other on the other side now? Have y'all had a conversation since it happened? Have y'all resolved y'all's issues? Let me ask you this, if you could go back in time, would you have done anything different about that time? Okay. Well, Mr. McIntosh, I appreciate your time, sir. Sound like somebody keeps saying get up. It might be somebody else that's buried over here that want me that doesn't want me talking to him about that. Don't it set off the conversation sound a little bit different from the person that uh you know that was defending themselves versus the person that was seemingly the aggressor. It's an interesting story, man. Again, beef goes back to the day of Cain and Abel. But back then, you could handle it a little bit differently. Thank God for progress. Y'all, this has been another episode of The Graveyard Shift. Thank you for tuning in. Love, love, love.
history can be wild. Mm -hmm. Stay out them duels, baby. Stay out them duels. <laughs>